This is Eastman's Elevated Podcast. I have on great guests that are really knowledgeable, consistently successful. We're able to dive deep down the rabbit holes of these different subject matters of shooting, of physical fitness, of mental toughness and drive. All the different skills that make up a complete hunter that you can become. Here's your host, Brian Barney. Hey, what's happening, guys? I've got a brand new Eastman's Elevated for you. So this week on the podcast, I have on 12-time world champion Levi Morgan. Um, what an amazing conversation. I have um, Dan Picard sit in on it. And so it's three like-minded individuals that just sit down and start talking archery and bow hunting. And and to be able to, to, to pick the brain of Levi Morgan, who, you know, is so proficient at, at, at archery and winning and shooting in high pressure situations. And then a great bow hunter too. Um, it, it was just wild. I learned a lot from the conversation. I really enjoyed it. And I know you guys are going to enjoy today's show. Sponsor for today is Matthew's bows. Um, I'm so impressed by Matthew's bows. They're, they're really putting out the best bows on the market. I just love the way they shoot. I love how forgiving they are. Uh, the, there's, there's absolutely no vibration in them. Uh, they're quiet. Uh, they're just shooters. Um, I'm so impressed by them. I shot the the Triax last year. I'm shooting the Vertex this year. And uh, I just don't think you can build a better bow than this on the market. Um, it just it holds on target really well, draws smooth, great back wall, uh, aim super solid. Um, it, the bow just absolutely fits me and, and it's going to come through in the season I have in 2019, um, having a bow that, that shoots that well for me, it's just going to, going to equal, you know, trophies on the ground. So, uh, so impressed by Matthews and thanks to those guys for, for stepping up and sponsoring the podcast, uh, Eastman's elevated. We sure appreciate it. And with that, um, Boy, yeah, just getting back from this ATA, um, what a great show. Uh, just so fun to, to hang out with the Eastman guys there and then um, be able to meet new people and, and uh, record just some awesome podcasts I have coming up for for Eastman's Elevated. And, and um, it's just absolutely amazing. And then, and then to, to get together with some of these sponsors that do stand behind the podcast, like the guys at Matthews and guys at Eberly Stock, guys at Sitka, and, and, and have conversations with them about you know new products they're coming out with, and, and, and then to let them know how much I appreciate the support and how much I appreciate them building good gear. It just makes me a, a better bow hunter. So it, it was just an absolutely great trip. Had a bunch of laughs and, and uh, like I say, recorded some great podcasts that are coming up. So um, I really look forward to releasing those to you guys and so yeah, just super psyched with the whole trip. Um, man, was it fun. So now I get to take off to, to Arizona and go chase coups. So I am so pumped. I'm going to leave here. I just got to get out. To, uh, I'm going to try to release two podcasts to you guys this week and then um, get out of town and make the 24 hour drive and get down there and start hunting. So yeah, I still got to load up all my stuff, but I'll uh, get these podcasts out, load up my stuff, get on the road. Uh, I'll be listening to some podcasts on the road, maybe some books on tape to pass the time. And before I know it, I'll be down in the desert and soaking up some 70 degree heat. And uh, I'm going to arrow a big coos down there this year. I'm going to look for, oh, 90 or 100 inch or like a, a really good solid buck. And um, yeah, I'm going to make it happen. I should time the rut about right. And um, it's going to be a blast. I'm going to pick up a javelina tag and I think I'm um, going to meet uh, uh, Logan's going to come down, capture some images for me, maybe some videos. So it'd be nice to hang out with him. I think my buddy Coulter is going to head down, hunt with me for the weekend. He already tagged out on a really nice coup. So um, he'll just be helping me out glassing, but just be fun to see him. I haven't hung out with him for a while. So it'd be fun to share camp with him. And then um, Miguel Morales is down there and just the coup slayer. I think he's. And we had him on the podcast, but I think he's gone seven years in a row arrowing a hundred inch plus coups. So that guy knows coups and he, he, um, he works for a border, border patrol down there. So he, he covers a lot of areas and can kind of help me out trying to find hot spots and things of that nature. So definitely going to check in with him and see if he's got a free day or two to, to come hunting. And so, yeah, it's just going to be really fun. Um, get together with buddies, hunt really hard, put on some good miles and and try to arrow a mature buck. It doesn't get any better for me. I just love these hunts. So I'm so excited. Uh, I better uh, get this this podcast out so I can get on the road and get uh, clicking off some miles here. But but thanks so much, you guys, for, for all the support. I really appreciate it. 
and uh I'll check in with you next week. Well, I'm not. That's what I say on the ending, right? Do the whole intro and then say I'll check in with you next week. I guess what I say is here. Let's get this podcast rolling. So, uh, Levi Morgan, amazing archer, Eastman's elevated. Here we go. Okay, I'm live here at the ATA. Um, I've got my buddy Dan Picar here, and then uh, we have special guest Levi Morgan came up and going to visit with us today. So, again, just thanks for taking the time, Levi. We sure appreciate it. Heck yeah, man. I'm excited, so yeah. I appreciate the opportunity. Three like-minded uh, individuals. You know, we all love to bow hunt. That's right. what we all live for. So, yeah, really cool to get you up here. Looks like you had a heck of a season this year. Yeah, you know, every year I, f I feel like we say, you know, we're never going to top that one, and then just things fall into place, and... It was it was unreal, and then my little boy killing his first buck the other day was probably the highlight of it. So, man, how cool is that? How old is he? He's six. Six. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and uh, he kind of looked at me before season and said, "Dad, I want to I want to go hunting." And so he had never shown a lot of interest in it, and I wasn't going to push it on him. And so at that point, it was it was game on. So we got him a crossbow, and he's killing it with it. Yeah, good for you guys. Um, yeah, it's wild when you're getting new hunters into it. You almost have to look with like a fresh perspective in in hunting. Right. And so all the things that we all take for granted that you learn over the years, it, you've got to try to explain to your kid and get him ready for his opportunity and yep. and practicing. But that's a really cool deal. My my youngest daughter. Um, this was her first year, and then my older daughter hunted with me again this year. But yeah, I just love getting the kids out. Oh yeah, and like you said things like that you take for granted but also just watching them see things for the first time that we take for granted you know just small game and everything that they're so excited about that you're annoyed with at this point you know like squirrels and you know and he's just like eating it up you know it was pretty cool to watch him you know see all that for the first time and experience it so it's fun to follow along too i watching you on instagram and right. seeing your guys passion you guys feeding off each other and it's oh, yeah. special it's it's what you know you remember when you're a kid from doing it what we did when we were kids with oh, our yeah. dads yeah and so it's yeah it's really cool to follow along and see yeah. that it was fun I, I told samantha after that we were we were walking out it's like midnight when we were dragging his buck out and it's dark and cold and he stopped we took a break he looks up and he goes dad I'm ready to kill an elk now. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay. <laughs> you know, those you are go. a little more expensive. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but good. he was hooked. He's fun. He's funny, but hooked for life. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah good for him. Yeah, I know my uh, youngest daughter, and we shot that buck, and then it got dark, and then you know, we couldn't figure out which trail we came in on or mm -hmm. took a different way out. So we had to march through a swamp and wet to her knees. But it was a total adventure for her, which right. is cool that a dad and a daughter, dad and that son, Cool. can then share that experience when you when you get home it's that um what do you call it the type two fun yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's oh, type yeah. two fun it's like sheep hunting <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. it's fun when you get home and think back about it exactly. <laughs> yeah exactly. right yeah that's a lot it. more fun the next year yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah right. thinking back on it yeah yeah for sure yeah. um well good yeah you had a bunch of hunts this year um looked like a couple good muleys you harvested yeah it was an incredible year for muleys and i got ate up with that a few years ago because i grew up a whitetail hunter mm -hmm. you know and so I went out west for the first time probably 11, 12 years ago and just was like, this is it, man. Spot and stalk with a bow is my favorite, you know, out west. And so mule deer things, high high country mule deer is probably my favorite out west. You know, I love elk, but I think high country mule deer is, I just love it, you know. And so this year I booked four mule deer hunts and, and was able to get nice deer in all four hunts. and. That's a good awesome. year, you know. Wasn't expecting to to be a hundred percent on that, but I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, I'd yeah. say, man, you did yeah. good. Yeah, all on good bucks too. That spot and stock game is so fun, yeah. isn't it? Just the planning strategy. There's so much strategy, and I mean, so much that can go wrong. So when it all comes together, it's just mm -hmm. rewarding. It's so many nuances to the stock, yeah. and and there's ne there isn't any hard rules either. You kind of just gotta. Well, me and Dan yeah. were talking today. Yep. I think me and Dan have had about three podcasts today that I haven't recorded, just <laughs> exactly. walking around the yeah. ATA. But um, yeah, it it's it's wild. There's just so much to it, and then you kind of just let your instincts take over and tell you whether to go on the stock or not. But I, I love how intense those encounters are. Oh, I know. Like this year in Wyoming, we showed up um, a couple days early. 
from my elk hunt and, and uh, hunt with a good buddy of mine, Dustin DeCrew, out there. And he's like, dude, I have a giant that I hadn't seen in a while, but since you're here a couple of days early, we could go try to find him. And I said, cool, you know, and I literally was in like not expecting anything, you know, we're just going out to get out. And the third deer we spotted in a spotter was him. And it was like, you got to be kidding me. And so he was in the most perfect spot and we like hiked down this big ridge and come on top of him and Dustin stayed back and we literally stood over him at 10 yards for like 30 minutes in his bed and it was like the most intense 30 minutes because you know wind swirls one time I was like there's no way this is going to work we're too close you know and he stood up and walked out 10 yards and over with you know it was like holy cow man like that could have been screwed up from so many different areas you know but it was awesome right um yeah um like in uh you know, uh, things can go wrong. Like you say, a million things can go mm-hmm. wrong during the stock. Oh, and, yeah. and a lot of times they do. And, right. and so that's why it is so special when it works out. And, uh, you know, we were talking, uh, to, I was talking to Dan about this too. Like uh, failure for bow hunting and spot and stock is a prerequisite. You oh, are yeah. going to mess up. For you sure. are going to make mistakes. For sure. You just try to learn from it and do better next time around. You know, yeah. whether it was the, and, and you try to kind of dissect what went wrong. Was it the wind? Was it my right. approach? Was it, you know, okay, this is where I messed up or this is where I want to do right. better. And, and sometimes you get another chance and sometimes you don't, but, yeah. um, a, a lot of times you, you, you get the opportunity to then do right on that stock. Man, that, that feels so good. But I feel like I'm, I'm in the groove when I'm hunting after I've messed up a time or two, then oh, you, yeah. you really get your stuff together. When yeah. You're you start dialing it in quick. Yeah, yeah. man. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep. And I kind of learned to mule deer hunt in the breaks and in, in Missouri river breaks nice. up in Montana. Yeah. yeah. And that's tough country, you know, and what I found the, the toughest part was a lot of times I would screw it up and have no idea what happened. Like you would bed a buck up and then you would put the most perfect plan together and come in and he'd be gone. Mm-hmm. And you're like, where'd he go? When did he go? Cause you were like stalked for three hours, you know, it's like, you have no idea what you did wrong. So it was, it's a lot of learning and yep. thinking back and going, what could we have done different? And, but it's what's so fun about it. Mm-hmm. You know? Yep. Yep. Uh, that's the worst when you when you don't know what you yeah. did wrong, isn't <laughs> it? And maybe you yeah. did nothing. Maybe he just moved right. off, or right. the timing was off. But yeah, that's the worst when you when you can't figure out what went wrong right. on it. Right. Yeah. So th- that comes to another question that I want to know, Levi, is what is more difficult when it comes to bow hunting or winning a championship, 3D shooting? I think winning a championship is is way more difficult. Because, I mean, it depends on what you are defining success and hunting as, yeah. you know, um, because I feel like what's cool about hunting is everybody can go do it and have some success at it, depending on what their goals are. You know, winning a championship is winning a championship, yeah. you know. Yeah. So and, competitive. Yeah. And there's only one guy that can do that every year. And so it'd be like saying there's one elk in Montana. So go, go for it. You, know, you might be gets the guy. It, gets it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think winning a championship is, is so tough. And. And uh, just something I was fortunate enough to have a great dad that, that was a great coach in that area. Yeah, yep. And not even realizing that as a kid, you know, what he was doing. But he was uh, – it was a pretty cool journey. But, yeah. yeah, yeah, I would have to say a championship's harder to, to win just because it seems more – you know, it's a little bit feels unreachable even for me every year. Sure. I look at it, I'm like, gosh, how are we going to pull this off? Man, you know? I'd say right. it's almost got to feel like Mission Impossible. Yeah, There's it does. just so yeah. many good archers yeah. out there that are working so hard, right. so disciplined, and you've got to be the top of the game. Right. And yeah. now, you know, and that was me when I was 18, 19 years old. I had nothing else. I was, you know, a stonemason, and I spent every spare minute working mm-hmm. to be the best. And, yep. And that's these kids, that's all they do now, you know. And so for me, I got so many irons in the fire, I can't practice. And these kids are just, they're unbelievable, man. Mm-hmm. And just yep. nothing, you can't shake them. Mm-hmm. You know? So it's tough to stay on top every year. So, so does that shooting, um, do you shoot mostly indoor? You probably shoot everything, right? Yeah. Indoor, outdoor? I do shoot everything, mostly outdoor okay. stuff. That's what I yeah. love to so, do. So does that translate in into your hunting shot? Like, how do you compare the, the pressure uh, of shooting in a tournament like that to shooting at a big game animal, say that big muley that you shot in Wyoming? Right. Um, I think hunting is a lot more instinct. Mm. And uh, it just kind of happens. And, and a lot of times hunting, I do it and don't even remember it. Okay. And and I wouldn't say the, the pressure feels a lot different, 
But in a tournament, I can remember every single thought that went through my head. Okay. I, I feel like, and in those pressure situations, because in a tournament, there there's so many things, so many moving parts to it, you know. And it's a controlled environment, you know. And hunting is not. So I feel like I'm thinking about how to kill this animal as fast as I can possibly get it done, you know, mm-hmm. before something goes wrong. In a tournament it's a controlled environment. So you, I kind of have a system in a tournament that I yeah, do yeah. to slow me down, Okay. you know? And so, you know, whether that's, you know, form, breathing, everything, because your heart rate's doing the same kind of thing, you know? Okay. But the problem is hunting's one shot, tournaments are multiple. Mm-hmm. So you really have mm-hmm. to kind of pace that and be able to suppress those nerves. You know, where hunting, that's what we live for. Mm-hmm. You know, you live for that, that just few seconds of adrenaline, you know? And in a tournament, that's kind of bad. You don't want that to kick in too soon, you know. And right. You got to kind of stay on a level plane and, and not let that adrenaline get to you. So I deal with the two completely different. Man, that's interesting. And you that know? makes sense because it's kind of almost like apples and oranges yeah. with the type of pressure and the duration right. of pressure. And it makes sense. That yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, so you're just looking for that sliver of opportunity when you're hunting to fire an arrow, but you're not thinking of your execution. So maybe we can go around the table like and, and talk about execution on the animal because I think I'm a little bit different. And I, I've taught myself to shoot the right way. Mm-hmm. But when I'm shooting at an animal or when I'm in that position I I almost have to slow myself down I get too excited my heart's beating Mm -hmm. too fast and 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 I'm too worked up and so what I have to do is take a couple deep breaths and I have to tell myself like right before I draw my bow I tell myself to execute because otherwise I stick my pin where it wants to go and I punch my shot off. right yeah you know so for me I have to tell myself okay I'm gonna execute right as I'm drawing my bow and then I settle everything in and then I settle my pin and I I tell myself put my pin where I want it put my pin right on the body and then I tell myself pull 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 right. and my shot breaks and he dies right but if I don't think about it or if I go into autopilot yeah. sometimes I will just stick my pin on the body punch my shot right. off and maybe I got him maybe I didn't I go god <laughs> so I've really got to get a hold of myself yeah, yeah. in those moments what what about you what's your process when you're shooting at an animal yeah, do you so have to go through that I do in a way I, I I feel like you know we shoot so much that the shooting part of it is not something I have to think about so yep. much but a lot of times hunting you're not in control of everything. Yeah. You're li- literally the animal dictates what you're doing. You know, when he turns broadside, when he gives you the shot. And I guess I worded that maybe a little wrong a minute ago when I was like, I try to kill it as fast as possible. I mean, when that oppor- when that opportunity comes up, that animal really decides when I'm going to make my move. Yes. And so in tournaments, every that's what I was saying. Everything is controlled, so that would be the difference. So when an okay. animal, I'm not thinking about what my next step is. I'm waiting on that animal to tell me what the, my next step is, I yeah. guess. So I really am not thinking about nearly as much once I get into that position and ready for mm-hmm. the shot. Um, and I shoot a hinge release hunting. I was going to ask you that. Okay. Um, so that really is a slow process mm-hmm. anyway. So there's no punching, you know, any yep. of that. So, And so we train ourselves to focus on aiming and nothing else mm-hmm. in tournaments. So you're never thinking about shot. You're executing the release. You, we separate the two in drills, and then in tournaments, we 100%. Because you can only do one thing consciously yes. at a time, mm-hmm. and your subconscious can do 100 things. Mm-hmm. Um, so we focus consciously on aiming and let the release fire subconsciously. And so, so just aim, 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 aim and yeah. then boom, you know, the okay, air goes. Cool. So, and when people have target panic, it's when they're caught between the two, you know, mm-hmm. and they're thinking – do I shoot now, you know, and they're trying to aim and do I pull the trigger and aim? And so then you, you can't do both at the same okay. time. So we train ourselves to aim, 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 and the release shoot. So with a hinge hunting, I can roll through that thing pretty quick, but constantly focused on aiming and picking a spot. And, and really the three things I have to know when I'm hunting is, well, really two, is how far it is mm-hmm. and when he turns broadside, where to aim. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. the only two things I try to focus on when I'm when I'm hunting if I know how far if I miss or make a bad shot it's normally because I rushed before the shot I didn't take the time to really pinpoint exactly how far he was um and but when I get to the shot if I know how far it is normally I can make the shot it's I screw up before that a lot of times. Okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. fair enough um and, and Dan we'll get to you I just had a couple quick questions so that hinge I think that's a pretty good release to hunt with I think 
a thumb, sometimes I'm waiting for it to break, and a hinge seems like you're in the process mm-hmm. of making it break, and so you're in the motion of making that shot go. Right. You're not waiting for that shot to go right. almost. Yeah, and we, I like to look at it as, okay, so if you're standing on top of a building and you got to get to the ground with a thumb button or an index release, it's almost like you're either on top or you jump. There's a hard wall there. There's yeah. no, no gradual way to get to the bottom. With a hinge release, it's almost like having a slide from the top to the bottom. There's mm-hmm. that constant movement, so you don't create that anxiety inside, like I either got to shoot or I don't shoot, you know. So that's why I like that hinge is that comfort of movement and cushion that I'm always pulling and it concentrating on aiming and then it fires. Do you yeah. shoot a click in your hinge? I do, yeah. Do you? Okay. That's just so I don't send an arrow down through the wood. Yeah, or I, would, I would think the same thing. And I don't use that in my shot as much as that's where I start my shot every time. Yep. So I'll pull so, and then click as I'm starting to aim and then I start my shot. So, okay. Yeah. Yep. And then once it clicks, then that's when you're when you're pulling. And right. so there actually isn't much rotation to do after it clicks. But like you say, you're just right. focused on the, Aim. the aiming yep. portion of it, and you've made that release go so many times. Right. That, you know, it, it's just it's almost subconscious at this ideally. point. Or it is subconscious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ideally, it is. And, yeah. and Dan, so us talking today, yeah. so you're really good at executing on animals too. Um. And 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 so what do you go through? What is your shot process from start to finish when you're trying to shoot at an animal? Yeah, I mean, after you come to full draw, and, and and speaking specifically, we were talking about this today because I shoot an index finger release, right. and I don't really know what target panic is, and I don't want to know. Right, yeah. And I don't think about it, and we talked about overshooting, and if you overshoot, you could develop mm-hmm. target panic, mm-hmm. and I was telling Brian about this today is that I'll take like two months off from shooting because I don't want to develop target panic. Right, yeah. And I haven't been able to get consistent with a thumb release Mm -hmm. either. And so I'm kind of just like, you know, when I was a kid, I started with an index release. And I'm still there Mm -hmm. because I've been able to be effective with it. But it's the same thing. You you reach full draw. And, of course, you're way more shaky than you are shooting at a target Mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm just making that pin stay on the target. It's all about aiming. And then without thinking, my finger makes contact with the trigger and then I, I just pull through mm-hmm. right. when it's time. Mm-hmm. Letting that bow aim is so important. Yes. Like, I can't yes. just put the pin where I want it and make the shot go. Right. I've got to let it aim, and it seems like my aiming seems to get smaller oh, and yeah. slows down a little bit. Yeah. And then when my shot breaks, I know he's dead. Right. You know, there's yes. no doubt about it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. For sure. Huh, that's wild. And you made a really good point, Levi, when you were talking about uh, waiting for the broadside animal. And usually when you miss, it's before the shot. Um you, you learn those hard lessons about not forcing your shot, right. not trying to force a bad angle mm-hmm. on an animal. You have to really wait for that opportunity to present itself. Yeah, absolutely. Just like your buck you were 10 yards away from, yeah. and you waited for 30 minutes for yeah. him to present a shot. Yeah. But I'm sure you had angles in there where— Oh, my you know, younger self would have sent one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. yeah, for sure. I, I, lear- I learned that lesson many times the okay. hard way and still learn them every hunt, you know. But, yeah, that – and, and you know, perfectly broadside or what's ethical is everybody has to put limitations on their own self, you yes. know. But, yeah, for me, it's – it's I screw up before the shot a lot. And, man, I made so many mistakes growing up bow hunting. And I look back and laugh at myself, all the opportunities missed because I was there. so yeah. impatient, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah. Because you work so hard and it may take weeks and weeks and weeks to get that opportunity. And all you want to do is finish it. And so it's easy to get in a huge hurry and rush everything, you know, not just the shot, but when you draw and don't take the time to range or plan or look ahead and or or brush or trying to force it in there in a small window or yeah. yeah. Well, I'm just glad that you've learned those hard lessons like we have. Oh yeah, yeah. you're not immune to them. You know, being such a good shot, you know, that we all have to take control of the situation that it excites all of us. But I guess that's why we all love it so much. Oh yeah, there's no doubt about it. (laughs) And when I was younger too, that's that's something that I have really developed over the last couple of years is taking my time more at full draw and aiming longer. And yes, like you said, right. as I'm aiming, you know, if if the animal is shootable throughout the duration I'm aiming, just at least three to five seconds of just yes. pin on the target aiming, always a better result. Mm-hmm. That always makes all better. and it feels so good to do that yes. in the heat of the moment when you when you have complete control over yourself and. And um, because I've been through both sides of it, where as soon as your pin hits fur, you let it go and you're like second guessing everything. That's a terrible feeling, you know. Right. But when you control the situation 
and aim and make a perfect shot and smoke it you know that is there's nothing better than that you know Absolutely. like i did it like i held it together and 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 pulled it off so it I, adds to the experience of uh, of the bow hunt or the oh, yeah. adventure we're on when you make a good shot like that and you execute correctly yeah. man that feels good and it almost takes away from it a little bit if you kill the animal and you didn't execute 100%. correctly oh, you yeah. know you walk yeah. up and you know even if it was a good shot you just go god man i, yeah. I really mess that you know next time i'm gonna do this or next time <laughs> yeah. i'm gonna do that but yeah in a in a perfect scenario it means the most when you execute correctly and then hit him perfectly oh, yeah. and dies within seconds yeah. What thing, all I remember for. winning a national championship in 2007, and I had a little bit of the target panic, and I didn't execute well at all in the finals and won. But I knew inside I shouldn't have won, and it, I was so disappointed. And you would think you just won. It was my second win as a pro ever, and I was so disappointed. The whole ride home, I was just miserable. I told Samantha, I said, I just – I shouldn't have won. I don't deserve it. You know, I, I didn't execute at all, you know, and so um, <laughs> I, I hated that feeling. So I can appreciate good execution and, and the satisfaction that comes from it for well, sure. That's what a champ does. He exactly. critiques himself even after he wins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So Absolutely. honest with yourself. Like right. not, Honesty, you're, yeah, yeah. You're, you're not lying to yourself. Right. You know, you're not patting yourself on the back because you won because you right. knew your execution wasn't right. That's yeah. You got to own it, man. Yeah. <laughs> Ownership <laughs> is everything. Yeah. yeah. So here's a question kind of back to the release thing yeah you bet what would levi morgan say to me who is a bow hunter that's all i've done my whole life i shoot some target but right. not much but on my release and my index finger release right what would you recommend to me keep going with what's working or do you think there's the possibility t to improve my release with something different i think you you only know what works for you you know and i get beat by guys shooting index releases still to this day you mm -hmm. know um if that's what you're comfortable with, I say take it and, and get better at what you're doing now. You know, instead of yep. switching up, just, you know, if you want, think you can improve, improve what you're already doing, you know, instead of starting over with something else. Sure. And that's what I'd say because nothing wrong with an index release, nothing wrong with thumb, nothing wrong with hinge, whatever. You know, everybody's got their own thing. There's very few people that hunt with a hinge, but that's what works for me. Yeah. You know, yeah. I don't compete with a hinge. Oh, Which you is don't? weird. I compete with a thumb button. Do you really? Yeah. Okay. And, but hunting, I have to slow myself down. Yeah. And so, and yeah. like I said, I don't think about it hunting. Mm -hmm. So I had to do something that forced me to slow down mm -hmm. without thinking about it. And that's what a hinge does. Interesting. Yeah. Yes. I think I'll throw a hinge in. I don't think I've taken an animal with a hinge. I've taken one with true back tension. I hunted with that when I was first learning mm -hmm. years ago yeah. um, to sit and execute. And then I use the thumb, but definitely in a total back tension style, like you're shooting tournaments as you right. settle the pin and pull, pull, pull until right. it breaks or right. aim, aim, aim until it breaks. But yeah, I think, I think I'd like to try a hinge because just like you were saying, I like being in the motion of shooting, right. you yep. know, and those hinges are so accurate for me too. Yeah, they are. And yeah. they're a great trainer, even if you don't hunt with it, because it's tough to hunt with for a lot of people but training you um to feel what that surprise release mm -hmm. feels like ah, yeah. well you that's know. what i would say would be good for you dan and not to to give advice or but is to uh pick up and mess with some of those releases because i think they'd make your trigger game even better yeah Sh that's yeah, yeah exactly that's yeah. why i wanted is, them is shooting a back tension and feeling that back tension shot and then it makes you a better trigger shooter yeah yeah and i would say you said you took a couple a month or whatever off from shooting I don't know if you do any drills in that time or whatever, but the, one of the best things for people to do if they, like, and you don't have target panic, which is awesome, if if people do, or, like, you don't want to develop it, the best thing you can do in off-season is aiming drills. So that's what I tell people that already have it. And it's the, one of the only ways I've seen that people can get over it is to literally pull back and aim on a spot and just lay your finger on the release and aim until your shot starts to break down and then let down. Don't ever fire an arrow for weeks. Don't fire an arrow. And what that does is that it relaxes your mind. It's like, oh, okay, I can aim on this. I don't have to shoot. You know, I'm in control here. This thing's not telling me I got to punch it at a certain time, you know. And so that's a really good thing to stay in shooting shape, to stay in form. Um, and it really allows, get, it broadens your window of that, that time that you can aim in the middle. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people that don't practice a lot, can aim pretty good for like three, four seconds, and then yeah. their shot starts to break down. Well, what that does is, you know, every week you're extending that if it's a half a second longer, and before you know it, you can aim in the middle for 10, 12 seconds and aim really, really good. And and so that's a great drill that I still do. If I'm having some anxiety or 
or aiming issues, I'll just say, I'm going to take the week and just aim, you know. And I so, love it. I love mm-hmm. it. That's I like yeah. blind bailing yeah. too. Yeah. Blind yeah. bailing. Uh, well, that makes you fo- focus less on aiming, I guess, right. more on your release. Um, yeah, that's what I was saying earlier. We separate the two. Uh-huh. Yep. So we do aiming drills and blind bailing. Oh, and okay. so right. when you separate the two, you, you have no anxiety. You uh-huh. know, you blind bail, you take the visual out of it. Yep. So you're working on release execution, muscle memory. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you do aiming drills where you don't fire and you're working on aiming in the visual and the relaxing of the mind um, and the control issue so you separate the two and then when you combine them it's gonna it's amazing how relaxed your mind is and you can just let it sit there and you're like I can shoot or I can't I don't have to shoot you know I need to get back to practicing those drills every year like you're saying those aiming drills I just you know I learned how to shoot back tension and you shoot pretty well and I just haven't messed with it for a while but I, I need to work on improving my aiming game, too, and I think those aiming drills would do oh, that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. For sure. I, I know what I'm doing this spring. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> for yeah, sure. It's cool. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. For sure. We still do it. I do it all the time. Yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah. That's good to hear. That's great advice. Yeah, it's so nice to talk to somebody that uh, is so proficient at, at archery, you know, just to, to pick your brain and to get some of those things that, that you do and to um, kind of jump inside your brain to, to hear your thought process when right. you're shooting at a tournament or when you're shooting at an animal. So killer, man. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a challenge is constantly trying to figure out what's going to, you know, put you over the edge and, <laughs> and make you better every year. And it's a funny game. You can never perfect it. You can never master it, but yeah. it's fun trying. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. yeah. yeah, it sure is. I think that's why we bow hunt too, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a huge part of it. You can never master it. No. You can never perfect it. You're going to make mistakes every time. Yep. It's just. It's this yep. ever evolving circle that you can keep improving at, but you can never master, like you say. Exactly. And, and you're improving at all facets, you know, whether it, it's your fitness, whether it's your shooting, mm-hmm. whether it's your knowledge, whether it's your stalking. Right. You know, there's so many facets that go into it. So, yep. yeah, that is exactly why we're all drawn to it. You're right, Dan, yep. because we can continue to learn, continue to get better, but never master. And so, right. like us as humans, we want to be challenged, you know. We, we need oh, difficult yeah. things out in front of us. And yeah. I, I think we found our thing. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I think that's another difference what you asked in winning a championship and hunting is you could never reach that pinnacle in hunting. You can try, but yep. you yep. you're just always getting better and all in archery you can win the championship mm-hmm. and then you're like okay now that's what the end, right? you know now yeah. what do i do win it again you know win it again and then <laughs> it's like okay well in hunting you can't do that you know it's like i and i, I love bow hunting and uh, like the and there's so many things that go into being a good bow hunter mm-hmm. you know it's not just being a good shot it's not just being a good hunter a good woodsman it's like hundreds of thousands of tiny little things that you got to do mm-hmm. right you know and and uh Gosh, it's fun. I don't know what I'd do without it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, and I think it's taking advantage of, of what you're good at. Like, you find your weaknesses, you mm-hmm. try to improve on them, but your strengths, like, your strength is definitely your shooting. Right. So you got to rely upon that heavy. Like, if you yeah. get a longer shot in an animal, you know you can make it 100% right. of the time. You know, so you, you've got to um, – it's got to be nice to really rely upon your good shooting when right. you're on a hunt, just oh, knowing yeah, that I you mean, can make that shot. And we were talking today just how important confidence is, not only the practice or being a good archer but walking around with confidence just oh, yeah. knowing you get that sliver of opportunity you're going to put that arrow in the right spot but when, when we're walking around with confidence that's when you're deadly oh yeah any i mean confidence is everything even if you're not a good shot if you believe you're a good shot <laughs> You're yeah. a lot better. Yeah. And that's the yeah. truth. I've seen it so many times. Even young guys <laughs> it's funny, come into the <laughs> – I mean, I, I tell them I mess, and they're like, how did you hit that? I'm like, I wished it in there, man. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You know, I wished exactly. it in there, dude, really hard. And they're like, shut up. I'm like, I don't know what to tell you, you know. And, like, it, in tournaments, I've seen people do it, man. I've, I, there's a kid named Joby Shaw, and he'll laugh if he listens to this. But I watched him shoot in a pro tournament. His first one, I was in his group, and it was – he was the one guy that I said will never win a tournament. He was terrible, man. He was terrible. <laughs> I mean, he, but he was the most confident guy you've ever met. And he just knew he had it. He's like, no, I'm better than this. I got it. And I'm like, you are 110 below par. <laughs> right? And it's over, dude. You're last place by 70 points. You know? And he's like, no, I can do this. And, and it was like the whole – professional division was like Joby will never win a tournament and three years ago he won the world championship wow <laughs> good for him yeah and the one the only guy I've ever met that I said he will never win a tournament won 
beat me in the finals and I ate it. <laughs> and I was like, dude, good for you, man. You yeah. believed in yourself wow. so much that he figured it out. Yeah. You know, they say fake it till you make it. Yeah. Well, he did it until he figured it out. And I, I mean, he's some of my toughest competition now. That is great. Yeah, and so I've it's watched good it. for him. Yeah, it is. It's awesome. We're all like, you know what? That's what we get, you know? Mm-hmm. You yeah. never count somebody out, especially somebody that believes in themselves yep. that much. Yeah, and wants to prove the doubters wrong, yeah, Because too. most people, Absolutely. you get last place by that much, you're never coming back. You're like, mm-hmm. okay, this ain't for me. Yeah. I, like, I know where I stand. <laughs> yeah. I'm way in last yeah, and place. He's like, this ain't my deal. He's like, that ain't no big deal. I'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take your money. And I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, come on back, dude. And he just kept coming back until he figured it out. It was, it's awesome to watch. I was like, dude, good for you, man. That's that's killer. Well, that's amazing right there, the power of positivity. Isn't just it? not only shooting, but in life, how you can apply that to everyday life. Yeah. yeah life Don't take hunting. no for an answer. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. You know, yeah. and, no, and companies laughed at him. They're like, no thanks you know he's like okay and he just kept and we would help him you know and help him here and there and he just kept showing up and kept until you really started pulling for him you know you see him improve and you're like dang mm-hmm. he might have he might have there's it. something there and Man, he is, you're right that is a metaphor for life is believing absolutely. in yourself yeah. in all the positions we're in we willed ourselves to get here we just believed yep. in ourselves and wanted something and kept yep. working towards it you know with, with me in the hunting industry like i used to read magazine articles and oh, then yeah. pretty soon i was going on those adventures i was writing about them and pretty soon i'm filming them. pretty soon i'm doing a pocket but i just willed myself to get oh, yeah. here like it, it yep. wasn't like i was given a bunch of talent or a bunch of skill i just worked hard at right. it exactly. it was something i really wanted and the same for you guys yep. you know 100 percent for you dan and and you yep. levi you wanted something and you kept working at it discipline and put right. in the work and then you you get yeah, there it's like anything hunting yeah. if you believe that 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 giant is over the next ridge and you just keep crossing and keep believing he's over there i mean you're gonna find him mm-hmm. you yep. know but if you go two or three and he's not here I'm like all right go back to the truck yep there's you know, there's like, this weird analogy with with fishing so i do a lot of fly fishing okay. and i live on the madison river and then fish for steelhead and all kinds of fish but i i love fly fishing i love the art of it next but, cast yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one more cast. One more and, and believing in your flyer having confidence in yep. your fly um you know that catches fish so when oh, you're yeah. going down the river if you don't believe in what you're fishing you're kind of half-heartedly throwing it out yep. you're like well this isn't going to catch anything it's been it's, it's been crappy fishing today they're not biting today or what and so you're just half-heartedly getting there but when you feel it's on and you know you're going to catch them and you have belief in your bug you're sticking it in every pocket and you're just fishing it different and then you catch fish you know but yeah you have to believe in it you have to man yeah that's really hard too and and what we do in archery because we have in 3d is all hunting scenarios but we're not allowed to use range finders and so what i've found is if i second guess what i how far i think it is then it it carries down into my shot, yeah. and it makes me make a terrible oh, shot. So that's I have to literally teach myself to believe I have the perfect guess every time, and it changes everything. You know, wow. that's interesting, yeah. Levi. So yeah. you just believe it's fifty-five yards oh, yeah. with, with every right. fiber in your being, and right. then you execute that shot perfectly right. at fifty-five. And, yep. and and that's what keeps you executing right. good shots. And Where if you go 55 and you thought it could be 59 or maybe it's 58 or you go right. back and forth, then you don't execute as right. good of a shot on yeah. it. Sloppy. Yeah. Sloppy. That's and, interesting. And, and it's so funny. And so a lot of times I've I've hit those shots and not be right. Yep. And that's when they're like, how did you hit that with that number, man? I was like, I wished it in there, dude. <laughs> you know? And I say that as a joke, but in real out reality, I made – such a good shot that and and when you make a great shot it makes up for so many other things that could go wrong you know but if i would have made a weak shot with two yards not enough it would have been terrible you know yeah but when you make yeah. a perfect executed shot because you believe you're going to hit it and you know you catch lines here and there and it's a difference in winning a championship and not you know and uh I don't know. It, it's funny, and you learn, I've learned most of those things the hard way. Like, gosh, I didn't believe in myself at all today, and shot terrible. You know, yep. second guessed every move I made. Mm-hmm. And over the years of doing that, you look back and you go, "There's only one thing to do: is to trust it, whether you're right or you're wrong." You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you got a good way of self-analyzing yourself too, right. and being honest with yourself. Yeah. I think that's one of the reasons why you're so proficient at what you do. Yeah. I mean, I guess. The first year I shot as a pro, I didn't win a single tournament, didn't make a top five, didn't make a final. And so I took that whole off season and went, what did you do wrong, you know? And so from the very beginning, I did that. I took notes. I said, where was my weak points? Well, 
what did I do right, what did I do wrong. And so that whole off season, I, I worked on my weak weaknesses. All right, guys, that's a wrap. Um, really fun conversation. Yeah, just just fun. Uh, I really thank Levi for taking the time. He has a busy show season. He was uh, racing around to, to to every different booth, and um, you know he he's he's just a super busy guy at ATA. So to be able to corral him for a podcast was awesome, and it's just really nice getting to meet him and just a down to earth guy and a heck of a bow hunter and a heck of an archery shot. So I, I really enjoyed the conversation with him. I uh, just can't thank him enough for being on and uh, thank my buddy Dan Picard. Um, he really came around and, and uh, helped out getting some good recordings and um, I just put him on the mic with me. It, it just added to the conversation um, just because he's such a diehard archery hunter too. So thanks a bunch to Dan Picard going around with me and getting some of these recordings. Um, it's just going to make for great content for you guys and, and uh, just can't thank him enough as well. And uh, with that, sponsor for today's show was Matthews. Um, Levi Morgan sh- shoots for Matthews. Um, me and Dan both shoot Matthews, and and we've just fallen in love with them. They they just um, they, there's no vibration. They're, they're super quiet bows. Uh, the draw cycle is super smooth. It doesn't even feel like seventy pounds. Solid back wall. Um, just aims and holds on target, and then it's just forgiving. Um, I'm just so impressed with the bows they're putting out. I really believe they're the best bows on the market. And I'm just so excited to have them on board for 2019 and a sponsor at Eastman's Elevated. So thanks to those guys. And with that, yeah, um, just really fun to get together with those Eastman's guys. Got a lot of laughs. Um, so hilarious. I I should do a podcast on some of the some of the things we we saw and had there. That that last night there, we had so much fun. We went um well, I'll tell you a little bit about it just because it's so funny. But we uh, we rolled down and we got this name of this burger joint. And then Brandon Mason, which is great at navigating, but his phone had messed up on him. And so he took us the wrong direction. And so we ended up walking for 45 minutes. If you don't think he got some ribbing over that, you know, it's uh, everybody was teasing him and a lot of laughs. And um, man, we went into this 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 really strange museum where um gosh you go in the bathroom you go to to take a pee you know and you can see through the the window or through the glass into people walking around the the museum or whatever but it's two-way glass where they can't see it it's just so weird um it, it was a really strange place i i could go on and on but it's so hilarious i just um I, I laughed so hard at some of the stuff that went on it was just great they they're just super guys and and really fun to hang out with and and um yeah some of the the people they know and introduce me to and and that i get to meet and have conversations with was was just amazing so um yeah it's, it, it was really fun it was my first show and and um just just nice to meet those people face to face and meet our sponsors and and um you know the the faces behind the names and just tell them how much i appreciate everything they do i just i i get to absolutely use the the best gear out there and uh, just so appreciative of it so um yeah it was really fun fun to walk around see all the new archery products and and uh just uh just an absolute riot down there so yeah get home a couple days here with the family and got a bunch of work done and and uh, now just get on the road and get down to Arizona, down to cactus country. Um, man, is it going to be fun. I can't wait to be sitting behind my binos. So just 24 hours of driving away. Get this podcast out and release to you guys and get on the road. So um, thanks a bunch for all the support, you guys. Uh, I'm going to get another podcast out this week. And... Uh, and then we've got some great recordings coming up. I'm just so excited at how the the episodes and the conversations went. And um, so I, I know you guys are going to like this content coming up. So um, thanks again for all the support. And uh, this time I'll, I'll check in with you next week. I said that on the, the intro too. Isn't that the word? I get all done with the intro and then say the wrong thing at the end. There's no way I was redoing it. I got to get on the road here. And I think it's more authentic when you mess up. I mean, who wants to do an intro over and over again? to me you know it's like uh you, you, you just uh have your points you want to hit and say what you need to say and if you mess up along the way you just got to put it out there but yeah anyways um so now that i'm doing the ending i will check in with you guys next week um yeah and, and keep working hard towards your goals <laughs>